restore, I will restore. But you must repent and come out from the world. And you must cough all to your knees and cry out to me, saith the Lord. You don't cry out to man, but you cry out to me, saith God. And I shall restore all that the devil has tried to take from thee. I will restore it. I will heal. And I don't know what, who he's talking to. I don't know anything, but I just know that when God says speak, I speak. And he says, shut up, I shut up. But I'm telling you today that God wants each one of us to be obedient to his word. He won't, Listen, church, when I was 20-some years old, 23, 24 years old, God saved my soul, Brother Sam. He saved me. I had no earthly idea, Joanna, Alice, I had no earthly idea why he would save me. or why I didn't even know what was going on, but I knew I got saved. Y'all know what took place. I got saved. In 1972, I got saved. But I had no earthly idea that Crossroads Community Church would be part of my program, of my life. I had no earthly idea, Sister Linda, that I'd ever meet Corbin. I had no earthly idea that any of you would ever be in my life. I didn't know any of you. I didn't know what was going on. I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about David Bobby Ministry. I didn't know anything about a worldwide outreach. I didn't know anything. All I know is God called me to repentance. I repented, uh, and praise God, I called out to him, uh, and I said, Lord, forgive me of all my sins, uh, and he forgave me of all of them, past, present, and future sins. All of them have been placed under the blood of the Lamb. Uh, if I sin today, I'm going to be chastised. Uh, if I do anything unwillingly, I uh, praise God, uh, against God's will, he's going to spank me, but he still loves me, and I'm still his child. My children are in here. Uh, and let me say this. If they are good children, uh, they're my children. If they're bad children, they're still my children. Uh, it doesn't make any difference if they're good, bad, or ugly. They're still our children. Hallelujah. And we're still the children of God. Uh, and God's telling me to tell these people today, uh, Come unto me, saith the Lord. Uh, come unto me, saith the Lord. Uh, I shall cleanse thee. Uh, I will cleanse thee, saith the Lord. Uh, but come unto me, repent, uh, and come out from among the world. Uh, for yea, I come soon, saith the Lord. Lord, I come after mine, and I'm coming after my children, and not anyone else. I'm coming after mine, saith the Lord. You must be mine, and you have to come out of the sin. You can't live in adultery. You can't live in fornication. You cannot live after the plans of the world or the, the laws of the world. You have to live after the laws of God. And if you don't know what the laws of God are, they're right here in this book. People can condemn me. They can judge me all they want. It doesn't make any difference to me. God loves you. He loves me. And he wrote down his plan right here. It's in this Bible. And this is what we have to live by. When he says, thou shalt not do this, you don't do it. Period. No matter how many laws the land passes and says it's okay, you don't do it. And, you know, I, I'll tell you, there's things that happen in this church. There's things that happen in this community. God loves us all. But we have to stand on that word. Doesn't matter if it makes people mad. Doesn't matter if it hurts people. If the Bible says yes, I've always told you that I believe it means yes. If the Bible says no, I believe it means no. And I'm going to stand on that word until God takes the breath out of me. And he can do that right now. He can do it any time. But I'm telling you right now, church, God is sincere. Rahab had no earthly idea when she woke up that morning what God was going, how God was going to use her. Had no earthly idea how God was going to use her. But she ended up being the great-great-grandmother. The great-great-grandmother of King David. And through David's bloodline came Joseph. Came Joseph. I want you to understand First of all, through that bloodline came David. Through David's bloodline came Joseph. You read it all the way down, then you guess who come after Joseph? Jesus come down through that thing to Joseph and Mary. And now we know that the blood that was in Jesus came from God. We know that that seed came from, but he had to have an earthly father in order to make the marriage right. Because that had been saying, now he was born of a prostitute. He was born of a harlot. He was born of a... Uh, whatever, he, un, unwedded mother, whatever. It doesn't make any difference. Jesus had to have an earthly father too. And so God made everything right so nobody could judge him or condemn him for that. But I'm telling you right now, everybody in here knows Billy Graham. Everybody in here knows Billy Graham, the great evangelist.
probably the greatest evangelist that's ever been born because he's known all around the world. His great-grandmother had no earthly idea when she had her child that there was going to be someone in her bloodline that would lead probably millions to the Lord. Then his grandmother had no earthly idea that Billy Graham was down coming down the line when she had her child. Then his mama, when his mama had that child, she had no earthly idea. Well, he's a cute little old boy. He's got a mouth on him. Cute little old boy. But little did she know that that little boy would grow up and God would save his soul and use him to touch and affect lives all over the world. She didn't know that, but she loved him just as much when he was a little young and disobeying her. She loved him just as much as he was when he was a little boy just running around, snotty nose and breaking everything in the house and tearing up everything, uh, aggravating the dickens out of her. She loved him just as much then as she did the day she died. Because it doesn't make any difference if he's the greatest preacher on planet Earth or if he's the rowdiest boy in the house, still her son. But little did she know that when that baby was born, what God was going to do with that child. And that's why I'm telling you, you see, you're not at the point yet where God's finished with you. Because he tells us when he's finished with us, he's going to come and get us. Can you understand? He's not finished with me yet because he hadn't come and got me. He's not finished with you yet because he hadn't come and got you. So why, why we're still alive and why we've got breath in our bodies, we need to be serving God any way and any how we can. Uh, it doesn't make any difference if you're an evangelist uh, or if you just walk across the street and witness to somebody. If you just shake somebody's hand in the grocery store and say, let me tell you something, Jesus loves you. It doesn't matter whether they're saved or whether they're lost. We need to be about our Father's business everywhere we go because God loves us, and that love is unconditional. Those joining by television right now, my time's run out here, but if God's dealing with your heart and you know there's sin there and you feel him tugging at your heart, I want you to say this prayer with me. Bow your head if possible. Father God, I come before you today. I have sin in my life. I'm asking you, God, to place my sins under the blood of Jesus because I believe in my heart and I'm confessing with my mouth that Jesus is the Son of God. And that you raised him from the dead. This moment I invite Jesus Christ of Nazareth to come into my heart. To be my Savior. To be Lord of my life. And I'm asking you Father to write my name in the Lamb's book of life. And seal me with the Holy Ghost of promise until the day of redemption. For I ask all of this in Jesus Christ's holy name. Amen. If you said that prayer and you meant it in your heart. God just saved your soul. It's all it takes. It's simple. If he was drawing you and you said it, he saved you. Now you need to get grounded in the church. You need to read the word of God, and you need to be baptized. But let me tell you this. If you'll dial the number on the screen, let us know you just got saved. We've got a couple of books we'd like to send you. They're absolutely free, and they'll help you. Pray for this ministry always. Support us when you can. And remember that Jesus is the answer around the world. God bless you.